I'd like to call to order the June 27, 2023 Richland 2 regular board meeting. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? Madam Chair. Mr. Trapp. I move to approve the agenda for the June 27, 2023 regular board meeting. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Mr. Trapp and seconded by Dr. Scott to approve the agenda for the June 27, 2023 board meeting. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. I will need to vote. I, do, I did not bring my electronic device, so for right now, I will be doing a hand vote, and I am in favor. And the vote is six yes, one not present. The motion carries. Executive session. May have a motion to go into executive session. Madam Chair. Mrs. Nash. I move to convene an executive session for the purpose of discussing student admission requests into the district's adult education program, student appeals, employment recommendations and certified releases, and discussion of superintendent employment. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Mrs. Nash and seconded by Dr. Scott to convene an executive session to discuss student admission request into the adult education program, student appeals, employment recommendations and certified releases and discussion of superintendent employment. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Nash, can you please confirm your motion? That is correct. The motion is correct. Board members, please vote. I will vote again by hand in the affirmative. And the vote is six yes, one not present. The motion carries. The board will now convene an executive session. May I have a motion to adjourn executive session? Madam Chair. Mr. Trapp. I move that we adjourn executive session at 625 p.m. and resume public session. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Mr. Trapp and seconded by Mr. Por or Mrs. Porter to uh, adjourn executive session at 6.25 p.m. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. We will now move on to item four, our public hearing for the budget for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. I would like to open up the public hearing for the Richland School District 2 fiscal year 2023-24 general budget fund. Please come to the podium to make your comments. Each person will have up to three minutes to comment. Do we have anybody here wishing to speak? Well, we will wait approximately five minutes to see if anybody does enter that would like to speak, and um, then we will move on should we not have anybody wishing to speak about the budget. Thank you.
address the board at our public hearing for the Richland School District 2 fiscal year 2023-2024 general fund budget to approach the podium. You'll have three minutes to speak. And this will be the last call for anybody wishing to speak about the 2023-2024 fiscal year budget. I hereby close the public hearing for the Richland School District 2 fiscal year 2023-2024 general fund budget. We will move on to item 5.1, our inspirational moment and pledge of allegiance. Mrs. Porter. Yes, it is with great excitement this evening that I introduce to you Mr. William Rawson, lead teacher for Richland Northeast High School's Convergence Media Magnet, and Dr. Terrence Aldrich, assistant principal, who have the privilege of working with some Richland Two with Richland Two's most amazing students. As one of the prestigious award-winning media magnets, RNE TV was named the best in the nation by winning the STN Broadcast, Broadcast Excellence Award. RNE TV has officially won every prestigious National Broadcast Journalism Award. This is the number one program in the nation. Without further ado, I introduce to you the inspiring Convergence Media Program of Richland Northeast High School. Good evening, thanks for that nice introduction. Um, interim Superintendent Gregory and esteemed board members. Uh, as was mentioned, my name is Bill Rawson and I'm the magnet leader and lead teacher for CavPlex Convergence Media at Richland Northeast High School here in Richland too. And I wanna first extend our sincere thanks for the opportunity to say a word or two tonight. 
Um, for the uninitiated, CAVPLEX is an academic elective magnet program which accepts anyone who applies. Students spend an introductory year building a journalistic foundation and learning the basics about how to contribute to the four publications we typically produce, which include an online newspaper called The Sabre at thesabre.org, if any of you want to write that down, a new show called, shameless plug there, uh, a new show called RNE TV Live, which was just mentioned, a yearbook called The Archive, and a literary magazine called Psyche. Students then move on to the production-oriented classes after the introduction where they create content for these publications. Yes, it's true that our publications have achieved state, regional, and national acclaim, but for me, the true inspiration is seeing these students thrive in this authentic journalism environment as they produce rewarding, impactful work. Uh, they are not pretend journalists, I tell them all the time, or journalists in training or anything like that. They are journalists, purely and simply. And the work that they do has become central to the schools, uh, to the cultures of both our, our school and our community. Whether it's through a broadcast video segment or written online article or yearbook story or breaking in the moment content on one of our social media handles, they tell stories that lend voice to the marginalized and delve into important topics that are relevant to their audience and produce some lighter, fun content too. Some of them may move on to a journalism-related field after high school. The majority of them may not, but what they learn and achieve in CAVQUEX, the sensibilities and perspectives they gain, the interpersonal skills they develop through interviews they conduct for their stories, the relationships they build with each other, um, all these things stay with them for a lifetime, no matter what they pursue after high school. I have had so many conversations over the years with former students who are in college or beyond, where they say to me, I'm so thankful I chose to be part of the journalism program, because it's literally what's shaped me into the person I am today. We thank you, our school board, for all of your support in making this a truly special program, as well as our buildings administration for their support under the leadership of Principal Mark Sims. With me tonight are two rising seniors, Alyssa Amaker, who will be editor-in-chief of the Sabre, sabre.org if you missed it before, <laughs> <laughs> and Ladeja Williams, who's one of our most creative and versatile broadcast show contributors. And I don't mind adding or editorializing a little bit here that these two young ladies inspire me personally every single moment I'm around them. First, I give you uh, Alyssa Amaker. Growing up, I was always the first one in my family to turn on the news after school, the first re to report back on what had happened at recess, and the last to volunteer for any sort of public speaking opportunity. But this past school year, after officially joining the Sabre staff, I changed. I came to Wish Northeast knowing absolutely no one in my Catholic class, but with me, I brought a passion for modern journalism and storytelling, which would later help me create unique bonds with my classmates and the surrounding Wish Northeast community. Through hands-on experience, I learned to navigate interviews with complete strangers, develop intriguing angles, and write stories to highlight the perspectives which make Arnie, Arnie. On behalf of CAVPLEX, I even had the privilege of attending the annual convention for student journalists held by the Southern Inter Interscholastic Press Association, or SIPA, in downtown Columbia. There, I entered a two-day writing contest where groups of journalists were tasked with finding and interviewing local businesses at Soda City Market on Saturday, then put in a room to write and publish an entire story on Sunday, photos and digital elements included. This experience alone pushed me out of my comfort zone in ways I'd never expected, and the lessons I learned and the work I ultimately produced made it all worth it. My exposure to insightful journalistic writing experiences and new relationships with such talented, ambitious leaders, such as our next speaker, Ladeja Williams, are the reasons why I proudly stand here this evening. Thank you, Alyssa. Prior to my years in this program, I really had little to no interest in journalism. Not in the sense that it was something I disliked or wasn't interested in, but more so that it never crossed my mind that it was something that I would be interested in. As a kid, I loved creating. I would try out all of these different mediums and materials, but nothing ever felt right. That was until I came across video production. I fell in love with storytelling, piecing clips together, and adding different visual effects to produce something beautiful. I loved it all, so when I found out about the broadcast journalism sector of CAVPLEX, I wasted no time in applying. Starting out, I was really scared because I didn't think I was capable of learning all that it took to be a real journalist. 
As time went on, however, I learned not only how to be a journalist, but how to be responsible and dependable as well. I was able to create videos that informed, entertained, and helped those around me, all while developing positive relationships with my peers and with those in my community. Through firsthand experience, I learned how to operate both in front and behind the camera and composed stories that highlighted the true essence of Richland Northeast High School and South Carolina. Through my time in CAFPLEX, I've been able to meet people from all different, from different cultures and backgrounds, gain insight into the field of journalism, and be a part of a tight-knit community that is open to any and everyone at Richland Northeast. I became a part of something bigger than myself while also being able to do what I love and help those around me. For that, I will always be eternally grateful to the program and those who have helped me along the way. We thank you for having us tonight and hope that you all have a good evening. Do the pledge sure. Got it? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mrs. Porter and Richland Northeast. Moving on to item six, the consent agenda. May I have a motion for the consent agenda? Madam Chair. Mrs. Washington. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda for June 27, 2023 regular board meeting. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Mrs. Washington and seconded by Mr. Trapp to approve the consent agenda for the June 27, 2023 board meeting. Is there any discussion? There is no discussion. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. Moving on to item seven, public participation. Before we begin, I will remind our speakers that each person is limited to three minutes and that our meetings are streamed live and recorded. According to policy BEDH, comments from the public should not include gossip, defamatory words, or abusive and vulgar language. The policy also prohibits in public session any expression of personal complaints about individual school personnel or any other person connected with the school system. Specific student or personnel issues should be handled through the appropriate procedures as indicated in the district policy. Questions asked during public participation typically will be referred to a staff member for a response at a later time. And we have one participant tonight, uh, Ms. Joyce Brooks. Ms. Joyce Brooks, and it appears that she is not present, so we will move on to voting on executive session items. Item 8.1, student admission request into the district's adult education program. Is Madam, there a motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Trapp. I move to approve the student admission request into, into the district's adult education program for student one. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Mr. Trapp and seconded by Dr. Scott to admit student number one into the adult education program. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. Item 8.2, student appeals. Madam Chair. Mrs. Nash. I move to deny the appeal for student number one. Is there a second? Second. second. The motion has been made by Mrs. Nash and seconded by Mr. Trapp 
to deny the appeal for student number one. Is there any discussion? There is no discussion. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there is, a, forgive me. So it is six yes, one no. Um, the motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Item 8.3, employment recommendations and certified releases. Madam Chair. Mrs. Washington. I move to approve the employment recommendations and certified releases. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Mrs. Washington and seconded by Dr. Scott to approve the employment recommendations and certified releases. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. Item nine, new business action requested. Policy GCQE, GDQC, retirement of professional and support staff. Is there a motion? I will make the motion to approve policy GCQE GDQC retirement of professional and support staff. Is there a second? Second. Was that Mrs. Washington? Yes. Okay, thank you. The motion was made by uh, Lindsay Agostini and seconded by Mrs. Washington to approve the revised policy of uh, GCQE GDQC. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no, the motion carries. Item 9.2, the second reading approval of the 2023-2024 budget. Mrs. Gregory. Thank you, Ms. Agostini. For the second reading approval of the 2023-24 budget, we have Dr. Harry Miley, Senior Chief Officer for Finance and Operations, along with Ms. Nancy Williams, our Chief Finance Officer. Good evening. Good evening. We have uh, the second reading tonight. Um, we're, the budget that you have in front of you is exactly the same budget, except for one line item. I believe it's line item 20 on the fourth page. It's line item 25, uh, as we were discussed, as we all discussed at the last at the first reading. We increased the line item for the for the board's budget. Other than that, the dis the budget is exactly the same as the first reading and we will be happy to answer any questions. Board members, any questions? And I apologize to y'all. I'm looking at my software in a different way than what it normally presents itself, so I'm not used to it. And that's why it's taking me a second to, it's just showing up different on my computer. Board members, do I have a motion for the, um, budget for the 2023-2024 budget. Madam Chair. Mrs. McFadden. I move that we approve the 2023-2024 budget. Is there a second? 
Second. The motion has been made by Mrs. McFadden and seconded by Mrs. Nash to approve the 2023-2024 budget. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no, the motion carries. Item 9.3, bond referendum funding update. Thank you. Mrs. Gregory. Yes, if um, Dr. Miley and Ms. Williams will stay towards the front, but uh, I ask Mr. Mike Gallagher to join us at the podium. Um, Mr. Gallagher is the director of Compass Municipal Advisors, LLC, and he will provide a bond referendum funding update tonight. And again, um, there is no action requested on this. This is just an update. Okay, no action requested. Thank you. Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the board, it is a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Uh, and I bring some really, really good news to you. Thank you. Um, I, we sold the bonds, the last tranche of your referendum debt, on the 14th of this month. Uh, we had eight bidders, and the low bid was Jeffrey's LLC. They're an investment bank out of New York at a 3.353% true interest cost. So that was really, really good. Uh, the bond issue will actually close tomorrow, so the money will be on deposit with the county treasurer, so you'll be able to uh, fund the rest of your referendum projects. Um, other key points about it is, is the, de the deposit to the project fund was $176,197. So there was some bid premium that was received, which is prepaid interest. And so that was also deposited into your project fund. A um, couple things I want to highlight about it is the credit ratings of the district. Um, the, the school district has a double A2 rating from Moody's, which is two notches off of the highest rating of triple A, and they have a double A rating from Standard and Poor's. Um, a couple of key things I'd want to highlight that you can see there on the strengths. These are comments that were pulled from the ratings reports. Uh, the strong and well-managed financial position of the district. Uh, the sizable and growing local economy. One of them even mentioned the new Scout Motors coming. Um, the solid financial management policies and procedures that you have in place. So these are all things to be very proud of, and these are the things that are within the board's control. Um, the, the weaknesses are things that could be a little bit of a deficiency, which aren't much of a deficiency, is the elevated leverage due to large retirement and health care expenditures. That's completely out of your control and something that the state retirement system deals with. Um, as also, as well as they noted that the limited ability to raise your millage because of Act 388. Well, unfortunately, that's something that handcuffs every school district in the state of South Carolina. But everything that's within the control of the board and the district, y'all have been doing a great job. So I wanted to highlight that. Um, so I wanted to touch base for just a moment and look over what we've done with the referendum program. Um, in 2018, it was approved. 2019B was an $85 million issue. 2020A, $149,995,000. Followed up in 2021 of $74,995,000. And each of these issues were timed to fund your construction cash flow schedule as you were moving through building your projects. Um, and then we issued the last tranche, which will be closing tomorrow, of $158,415,000. The thing I really want to bring to light was when this was all put together, um, the plan was that millage was going to go up no more than 10 mills. So the target debt service levy would have been 118 mills. Actually, we've had it lowered. You're at 104, so that's 14 mills less than what was projected. Part of that was because there's been some growth in assessment, but the bigger thing has been the timing of the sales and the market that you've been able to issue the debt and take very good, be very good stewards of the taxpayer's money. Um, 
to give you a graphical representation, something to look at, and there's two things I want to highlight here on this graph. Um, one of them is that you see the green bar on there. That's a debt that's not been issued, and we'll show, look at it in just a minute. That's the 8% capacity. Previously, you had done annual 8% bond issues to fund your capital needs and some long -term, longer term maintenance projects. Um, so that is built into this program that you have that within the 104 mills. And the other thing is, is beginning in 2028, there's a sizable reduction that way if there is a substantial capital program that the district has, we haven't put you in a position where you have to raise taxes at that time. It should be able to fit within this, depending on what the needs are of the district. And to put this a little bit more into perspective, um, annual money, new money, 23 and beyond, $12 million a year for your 8% money for capital projects. Um, and then just highlighting that you have that future capacity you need down the road. And finally, just a little congratulations for you. <laughs> and I'll be happy to answer any questions y'all may have. Board members, questions, comments? No questions or comments. Thank you so much for your presentation. Item 9.4, funding flexibility approval. Mrs. Gregory. Yes. Funding flexibility approval, again, Ms. Williams and Dr. Miley will share. Good evening. Um, we're seek, standing before you seeking approval to utilize um, the flexibility that's in Legislative Proviso 18.14 to transfer roughly $188,000 from unspent EIA funds to the District General Fund. Um, I'm available if there are any questions. Board members may have a motion. Madam Chair. Mrs. Nash. I move that we use the funding flexibility provided in Legislative Proviso 1A14 to approve the transfer of $188,144 from Education Improvement Act funding to the district's general fund. Second. The motion has been made by Mrs. Nash and seconded by Mrs. McFadden. Board members, is there any discussion? Dr. Scott. Thank you so much. I do have a question just for clarification. This $188,000, what exactly would it be used for? On the information that you guys shared with us, you stated, you know, adult education, summer reading camp, aid to districts, gifted and talented. So are we dividing that money up between the different organizations or is the money going directly to one organization and when will we use this money because looking at the information you guys have shared, you have that additional plus year. So are we transferring this money and plan on using it for next summer? Um, so the funding essentially came from four different sources. So it's those those appropriations from those four sources that you listed, CERDEP, um, adult ed, et cetera. Um, those funds were received by the the um, district in FY22, so if we don't spend those funds, and, and so with those allocations, you have the year that you receive the funds, plus one additional year to expend them. Um, and so if we don't expend those funds in this current fiscal year, we'll have to send them back to the state. However, it's June 27th. So um, essentially those funds will transfer over into fund balance. And I guess I have a follow-up question. If it's going to the fund balance, then money from the fund balance can be used on anything. So how would we know what's going to be allocated to each of these categories that you guys have listed? Because there is no line item here that's saying we have $188,000. So 20,000 is going to summer school for next year, 40,000 is going to this item. If you don't have that information tonight, that's okay if you can just get back with us because I really want to know where this $188,000 is going and not just it's going to the fund balance because what does that actually mean? Yes, ma'am, we can get back with you. Okay, thank you. Board docs is fine for okay. that. Thank, thank you. you. Any other questions? Can we post the motion? Mrs. Nash, can you confirm? That is correct. All right, board members, please vote.
And the vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. Item 9.5. Mr. Chair. Excuse me. I just wanted to mention that this is the first budget that Ms. Williams has been overseeing. And I've only been here 10 years, but this is the best budget we've ever had in District 2. So I think we have, we're in great hands, and she's doing a great job. So I just want to mention that this is her first budget, and it's the best one I've seen. All right. Well, so. thank you, Dr. Miley, and thank you for recognizing Mrs. Williams. <laughs> yes. Item 9.5, the authorization for superintendents to apply for available state, federal, foundation, and other funded programs funding for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. Mrs. Gregory. Right. Dr. Miley, Ms. Williams will stay at the podium. This is something that we routinely ask for um, annually, the authorization for the superintendent to be able to apply for these funds if needed. Frequently, certain grants and requirements require us to have documentation that the, that the superintendent has authority to, to, this, to make this application. So we, we need that, and so the, the thing would be that if we don't have this authorization, we will need to be coming to the board asking for that authority to be documented for the super superintendent to do it. And th that would be okay if some of the time it wasn't such a tight timeline, some of the time, to get these documents into the grantee, grantor, grantee, the people that are granting the money. And so we, we would like this. And we've done this every year since I've been here, but it gives the superintendent the authority to apply for these grants. May I have a motion? Madam Chair. Mrs. Porter. I move that we authorize the superintendent to apply for the available state, federal, foundation, and other special funded programs funding for the 2023 through 2024 fiscal year. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Mrs. Porter and seconded by Mrs. McFed to authorize the superintendent to apply for available state, federal, foundation, and other special funded programs funding for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. Is there any discussion? There is no discussion. Ms. Porter, can you make sure the motion is correct? That's correct. Board members, please vote. And the vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. Item 10, new business, no action requested. 10.1, policy revision proposal, policy JIHC, use of metal detectors. Mrs. Gregory. Yes, Dr. Franklin, our deputy superintendent, is at the podium to share the policy revision proposal for JIHC, use of metal detector. Thank you, Mrs. Gregory. Madam Chair, members of the board, Traditionally, we've conducted metal detector screenings at major athletic events at the high school level. You'll recall last school year, we implemented pop-up metal detector screenings at our high schools and middle schools um, during student arrival. Additionally, we are preparing for daily metal, metal detector screenings at our high schools when the new school year begins. Therefore, district administration recommends revisions to policy JIHC to reflect such. Board members, questions? Comments? We'll move on to item 10.2, policy revision proposal, policy IKE, promotion and retention. Mrs. Gregory. Again, Dr. Franklin will provide the revisions for the proposal for IKE, promotion and retention. Thank you, Mrs. Gregory. Madam Chair, members of the board, this spring, the state's accountabil accountability model has um, been updated and now includes a metric called first year on track to graduate. According to the definition of this new metric, a student completing ninth grade in the 23-24 school year is considered on track to graduate if he or she earns six units of credit by the end of the school year. Subsequently, that same cohort of students is considered on track to graduate if they earn 12 credits by the end of 10th grade and 18 credits by the end of their 11th grade year. Tony, if you would scroll up so we can see the revisions. Thank you. After consultations with high school principals and members of the Parent Advisory Council, District Administration proposes to revise the promotion criteria in policy IKE to bring it in alignment with the state's on track to graduate metric. Please note that there is no requirement for these two criteria to be in alignment. However, the individuals who've been involved in this decision recommend that they do align. 
Additionally, the State Board of Education's new requirement of a half unit of credit in personal finance and 6.5 units of credit in electives has been added to the policy. The personal finance requirement goes into effect with the 23-24 incoming ninth grade class. Board members, questions or comments? Madam Chair. Dr. Scott. Yes, just one question for um, clarification. If you go down to, I think it's page three, school multidisciplinary team review, want to have clarification of that last sentence that indicate the principal is responsible for the final decision to promote or retain a student in grades K through eight. Is that something new? Because I do recall that once you go through the team, then the principal will actually sit with the parent and they make that jointly decision. So is that something that we're no longer doing? And the reason why I ask this is I know how critical it is for parents and sometimes parents um, disagree with principals and I get that. And they may want to take a different avenue than what we are actually offering for that child to get back on grade level. So is this something that's coming directly from the State Department? Or is this something that we included? Because I'm a little concerned about the principal is responsible for the final decision. I think parents are their child's first teachers, and I think they should have a final say along with the, the principal after looking at the information that the review team shared. Now, if a parent see that and the team is saying, you know, these are our reasons, and the parent's saying, no, I don't want to hear it, that's a different story. But I just want to make sure that we are inclusive of parents with that final decision. Right. And so, um, of course, the revisions that are recommended by district administration refer to the high school um, credits. So there is no change being recommended by district administration as it relates to the decision about promotion or retention for K through 8. What is um, printed in the policy is currently in policy and is being followed. And it's been that way, I know at least since I've been a, um, when I was a Yeah, a, a I would principal. like to see us so have, the, um, I'm sorry. The um, parents, of course, would be a, um, a part of the decision, the, mm -hmm. the decision. and so the um, principal, of course, hears the, the parent out, mm -hmm. but the final decision, as it is in policy, is the principal's decision as right. an educational professional. And thank you for that, because I thought it was the other way many, many right. moons ago. <laughs> but I would like to, um, for us to have a conversation about that, because it concerns me when we say final decision, especially K through eight, mm -hmm. and not let the parents be jointly making right. that final right. decision. Yeah. decision. Now, also, I'm sure that it works both ways for promotion and retention, because um, right. I've experienced um, parents who were wanting their kindergartner retained, yes. <laughs> um, and so of course the parent has the opportunity to share their um, perspective with mm -hmm. the principal, but the decision is the, the final decision is the principal's decision. So it works both ways for promotion Absolutely. and, and retention. And hopefully parents and principals can come to a happy yeah, medium oh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> and, move, and move forward. Thank you for that clarification. You're quite welcome. Any other questions, comments? Thank you so much, Dr. Franklin. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Moving on to item 11, agenda items for the next meeting. Mrs. Gregory. Yes. The proposed um, agenda for Tuesday, July 11th, 2023, called to order, approval of the agenda. Under executive session, um, we will have admissions requests into adult ed, student appeals, breach of contracts, employment recommendations, and certified releases. Inspirational moment in our Pledge of Allegiance. In our consent agenda, the approval of the consent agenda, minutes from the previous meeting, and classified employment releases and in-district transfers. 6-1, or under 6, our first public participation, and then 7, voting on the executive session items. Under 8, under unfinished business, um, policy revision, IKE, that Dr. Franklin just shared, and promotion and retention, and 8-2, policy JIHC, use of metal detectors. Under new business, no action requested, policy revision for pro proposal EBCB, safety plans and drills, these are required updates. Um, and 9-2, again, another revision proposal on student absences and um, excuses. 9-3, um, policy proposal on GCCAC, GDCE, unpaid parental leave. Again, that is something new that is coming down from the state. 
And you'll see 9-4 is a capital improvements update. I see that it was also listed under the consent agenda, and we'll need to make that um, correction. But um, we are going to give an update in person of the capital improvements going on in the district. So um, we'll look at the draft agenda items for August the 8th, second public participation if needed. Um, executive session will be continued again if needed. Voting on executive session. Our board and superintendent comments to wrap up our meeting and then adjournment. Board members, questions, comments? All right, moving on to item 12, public participation continued. We have nobody else signed up for public participation. Item 13, executive session continued. May I have a motion to go into our second executive session? Madam Chair. Mrs. McFadden. I move that we recess public session and move into executive session for the purpose of completing the rest of the items from the original executive session items. Is there a second? Second. I'm sorry, was that Dr. Scott? Okay, but actually I couldn't figure out which one it was. And so the motion was made by Mrs. McFadden to convene an executive session and um, seconded by Dr. Scott to continue the discussions, the unfinished business of our first executive session. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. The vote is. She did change it. Did it change? She changed it back to yes. She started yes. I haven't called the vote yet. She, it's a miss. She's a yes. Do we need to revote? Okay. So it refreshed. Okay. So. The vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. The board will reconvene in executive session. May I have a motion to come out of executive session? Madam Chair. Mr. Trapp. I move we conclude executive session at 7.32 p.m. and resume in regular session. Is there a second? The motion has been made by Mr. Trapp and seconded by Mrs. McFadden to adjourn executive session at 7.32 p.m. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Board members, please vote. Mrs. Washington, your vote? Did it register? Okay. The vote is seven yes, zero no, the motion carries. Item 14, voting on executive session items as needed. We do not need that. We'll move on to item 15, old business action requested. Item 15.1, personnel matter regarding selection of new superintendent. Is there a motion? Madam Chair. Dr. Scott. I move that the board employ Dr. Kim Moore as superintendent for Richland School District 2 to the terms negotiated between the board and Dr. Moore. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made by Dr. Scott and seconded by Mrs. McFadden. Is there any discussion? No discussion. 
I, I will just state my concerns. I'm excited that um, about the opportunity or the potential opportunity to have um, Mrs. or excuse me, Dr. Moore join us, but I will not be supporting it just for the um, for the, the inconsistency or the the rush of the process. Um, I would have liked to see things go a little bit differently in terms of how we proceeded. So that is my reason for not supporting this vote. Any additional Madam discussion? Chair. Yes, Dr. Absolutely. Scott. I am just elated. I am giddy like a little kid in a candy store. Dr. Moore comes with so many credentials. Not only is she beautiful inside and outside, she is very, very intelligent. It's something that's going to bring new, fresh ideas and so many wonderful things to Richland School District too. We're already a school district that's doing well, but we, can, we are getting ready to blow off the charts. And not only will she come, and be a mentor and a role model to so many of our faculty and staff. And when I say faculty and staff, not just our principals, not our district office staff, but our school cafeteria workers, our bus drivers, our teacher assistants. I am just so excited to welcome with big hugs, love, and kisses to the first African-American female superintendent of Richland School District 2. Dr. Moore, congratulations, and I speak for myself. I am so excited to have you here and to walk alongside you, to learn so many wonderful things from you, and let the community hear from you. If you would, please come up we need to, to the front first. After Dr. the vote, would you come? I'm Dr. so, I'm, listen, I'm so excited. I am so excited. Can't you tell? I'm so excited. <laughs> after the vote, if you would please come to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Any additional discussion? All right, we'll call the vote. That means you know what my vote is. <laughs> So the vote is six yes, one no, the motion carries. Dr. Scott. I will turn it over. I would like to turn this over to our first African-American female superintendent of Richland School District 2, Dr. Kim Moore. And Mr. Moore, if you could come forward also, Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore, please come forward. I wanted you to come forward, Mr. Moore, because we wanted the community to see you so they'll know who you are and whose you belong to. <laughs> Hello, community. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. First off, I don't like standing here with my back to the most important people in the room which is our community. And so I'm gonna turn around this way because for the record, I need to speak into the microphone, but please understand that this is the only time you'll get to see my back because we're now family, okay? All right, so thank you, Honorable Chair Agostini and Dr. Scott, um, who is the Superintendent Search Committee Chair. First, I want to thank my fellow candidates and educational colleagues who made this a very robust process. I want to thank the entire board for your consideration and this offer. Through this process, I have enjoyed learning and understanding the depth of commitment in Richland School District 2. I appreciate the focused vision on student success, and in that area, we are definitely aligned because that is your purpose and your why, and that is my purpose and my why. Through this interview process, you have learned about me, 
My character was built upon the experience from my childhood, including my time with my grandfather and my mother, who were from Gifford, South Carolina. So while I'm a native of Pennsylvania, the blood runs through me as Carolinian. My faith, my service in the United States Army, my education, my family, and my experience as an educational leader, starting as a teacher, I walk the talk that I talk, because we are committed to one thing and one thing only, and that is to provide the best educational experience for each and every child that we have the privilege to educate. And it is a privilege to educate our students. And it's one that I take very seriously, and I know you do. So I want you to know that we are partners in this work. Now to our community members, I want you to know that I have a proven record of building partnerships within the community. And over the next 90 days, you will see me out and about in the community, connecting with you, learning more about what you do and how we can continue to best serve our students. So it's critical for me that you understand my passion and education is my joy. It's the reason I get up every day. It's the reason I do what I do every day. And it's the last thing that I think about before I go to sleep. So with that, it is with great joy that I accept your offer to serve Richland School District 2 as superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moore, and welcome, Dr. Moore and Mr. Moore. Before we move on, I want to take a point of privilege. I am going to make an early exit right after I say this, as I have another commitment also this evening. It's been an honor to serve as chair of the Richland II Board of Trustees, and at this point, I will now turn over the meeting to Mrs. Gregory for item 16, election of board officers. Have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Agostini. Um, I will reference you to policy BD, organization of the board, and we have it on the screen, um, I believe. I think that's the admin rule. But policy BD, organization of the board, says the officers of the board of trustees are chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. The officers are elected and sworn in annually at the last meeting of the board in June, at which the last order of business will be the election of officers. The elections will be conducted by the superintendent, who will preside and act as temporary chairman at the meeting until a chairman is elected. The superintendent will take nominations for each office, beginning with chairman. Officers will be elected by majority vote of the board using paper ballots unless there's a single nominee, in which case a show of hands will be used. Note that elective officers will take their positions immediately upon completion of the election, and each officer will serve a one-year term. No officer may succeed him or herself in the same position more than once. Therefore, each officer will be eligible for only two successive terms in the same office but may again be elected to the same office after a break in service. So with that, item 16-1 on our agenda tonight, under 16 board elections, 16-1 is the nomination for the chairman of the Board of Trustees for the 23-24 school year. And so as we start with that, I am, we are seeking nominations for the position of Chairman of the Board of Trustees for the 23-24 school year. The floor is open for nominations. Uh, Ms. Gregory? Yes? I'd like to nominate um, Dr. Scott for Chairman. I, um, hard decision, but I would like to nominate Joe Trapp. All right. All right, is there an additional nomination?
Is there an additional nomination? Right now, I have Dr. Scott, son of Dr. Monica E. Scott, and Mr. Joe Trapp. Do I have an additional nomination? All right, again, so the nominations that are on the floor are Dr. Monica E. Scott for chairman and Mr. Joe Trapp. All right, since we have more than one, you have paper ballots and they are color coded. So at this time, if you will use your purple ballot, it's labeled chairman. And if you will please vote. I have one question. Just for four year purposes, I would like to request that you write your name on your ballot so we would know how the votes go. That is fine. And if how you... folks voted. All right, so if you will write your vote in. Um, Dr. Scott? Mark your vote. Yes. Um, we've never done that in the past, and it's always been a secret ballot. Uh, what's so secret about it? I don't want anyone knowing who I voted for. That's my, my right. vote. And it has been secret ballot in the past. I don't know that it should be so if, public. So if you will mark your ballot and place it face down. Is there, well, I have a question just for curiosity, and I will respect that, um, Ms. McFadden, but is there a policy that goes along with it? I know it's practice, but since we are now moving forward and we work with policy and procedures, is there a policy that you could quickly um, refer to? Um, I'm not aware of one, um, but I will say that I've, this is my second time doing this, actually my third time doing this, and in the past I know that this is the way it's been done. I don't mind to change it in the future, but for this particular time, since it's short notice, I would prefer not to make my ballot time. No. Absolutely, and I can respect that. Thank you Thank so much you. for that. Absolutely. Okay. If you will mark your ballots and if you will pass them to the left. If you'll pass them to the left. <laughs> Yes, and Ms. Ms. Council will pick them up and we'll tally them. So the vote is three votes for Mr. Trapp and three votes, I mean for Mr. Trapp and three votes for Dr. Scott. It is a tie. And thank you so much for that. And what I would do is, I'm, I'm great at serving from the back. And no matter what position I serve in, I still shine. And one thing that my grandmother said to me, Sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. When something is not meant for you, you need to know how to walk away. So, Mr. Trapp, I'm going to concede, and I look forward to working with you as the board chair, along with all of my colleagues. And let's take this vote, and let's do this thing, because I'm ready to get started with Dr. Moore. So let's get Mr. Trapp up there, and let's get our yes votes, and let's keep it rolling. Thank you. All right, so I think just to formalize, if we can do a hand vote, so the nomination, we have a nomination on the floor right now, is um, Mr. Joe Trapp. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, and so we have, Ms. Council, if you'll check behind me, we have a vote of six yes. Yes, six That's yes, right. zero no, uh, one not present. All right, and so Mr. Joe Trout is our chair. And also I want to say thank you to Mrs. McFadden for your vote, and thank you um, to Nikki Porter for your vote as well. Thank you for the confidence of voting for me. All right. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Trapp. We will move to 16-2. 16-2 is the nomination for the Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees for the 23-24 school year. We are seeking nominations again for the position of Vice Chairman. And again, the floor is open for nominations. Ms. Gregory. Yes. This is Ms. Washington. I would Ms. like to uh, nominate um, Angela Nash for Vice Chair. Second. Okay, we don't need a second. 
No, ma'am. All right. Are there any other nominations? Yeah, I'll repeat it. Are there any <laughs> other nominations? Just want to make sure we don't leave anyone out. One more time. Any other nominations? All right, so we have a nomination on the floor for Mrs. Angela Nash for the vice chairman position. All in favor, please raise your right hand. I didn't. Ms. Counts, you're going to have to see around. Yes, so the vote is six yes, one not present. All right, so congratulations. Mrs. Nash is our vice chairman. So with that, we have 16-3. And so with 16-3, nomination of the Secretary of the Board of Trustees for the 23-24 school year. So, Mrs. Um, Gregory. Yes, ma'am. I would like to nominate LaShonda McFadden. All right, we are seeking nominations for the position of Secretary. Mrs. Gregory. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to nominate Tamika Washington. Washington. All right, again, the floor is open for nominations. Are there any additional nominations? Are there any additional nominations? All right, one more time, third time. Are there any additional nominations from the floor? So we have a nomination on the floor for Mrs. LaShonda McFadden and Mrs. Tamika Washington. So again, we will go to our ballots. And in this case, you have a blue ballot for secretary. If you will follow the same procedure as we did earlier, and if you will please use the blue color-coded paper ballot. Mark your ballots, and then if you will pass them to the left. Has so everybody voted who wishes to do so? All right, Ms. Council will tally. The vote is four votes for Tamika Washington, two votes for LaShonda McFadden, and one who's not present. Okay, so Ms. Washington, so just to confirm that Mrs. Washington is the secretary for the next school year. Congratulations, Ms. Washington. I want to congratulate our, our new officers, Mr. Trapp, Chair, Ms. Nash, Vice Chair, and Ms. Tamika Washington, our Secretary. And before we move on, I would like to acknowledge um, our, our outgoing officers and thank Ms. Agostini for her leadership as Chair, Dr. Scott as Vice Chair, and Ms. Nash for Secretary for serving us well this year. So thank you. So, with that, if you'll reference back to the board policy that we talked about, it says elected officers will take their positions immediately upon completion of the election. So with that, and our board chair is no, is no longer in the room, so Mr. Trapp, I am going to pass the torch to you. And um, we will wrap up with 17 board and superintendent comments and adjournment. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Uh, we'll just start on the far end of the room and, and work our way down. And I'm assuming Mrs. Washington is at the end. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, <laughs> Chairman Trapp. Yeah. All right, I want to thank everybody who came out to our meeting. Um, and those of you who watched online, I want to personally thank Nancy Gregory for stepping in to help us transition through this process. Your dedication and your transformational leadership skills have created avenues for us to be able to realign our priorities on academics, fiscal management, and partnerships. This is who we are, Richland, too, and this is how we will stand out. I am asking the community to rally and get involved in your PTO 
goals and to help us grow our community so that we can transform the lives of our students and rally around our district leader with no hidden or personal agendas, but with the focus of student outcomes in mind. I actually want to take this opportunity and ask us to pause for about five seconds because June is National Gun Violence Month, and I want us to remember those students that we've lost from June 2022 up until June 2023. Remember those students near and dear to your heart and know that we are working as a district to make sure that we are also a part of the process to curb gun violence. Again, thank you, Richland, too. Let's get on board and let's embrace, as I love to say, something new in Richland, too. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mrs. Washington. Uh, Mrs. Porter. Yes, I want to also thank you, Ms. Gregory, for your dedication to Richland, too. Um, it goes without saying that uh, your dedication and love for this district goes beyond your years here. Um, and everyone knows that you truly do love not, not only our staff and those that work really hard for this district, but also our students. Um, thank you to r &E's Convergence Media for the inspirational moment. I saw you taking advantage of all of the media in the room as well, and it just made my heart smile. So your future coworkers may be in this room. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would also like to give thanks and appreciation to Mac and ja Jake for their um, super for the superintendent search firm and all of our stakeholders that participated um, and gave their feedback. It was extremely helpful to our decision that we made. And um, if you're in this room, thank you so much. Um, thank you to our partners, Serve and Connect, for the event held on Saturday at Jackson Creek Elementary. My children and their friends had a ball and also I spoke to many community members that were also grateful for the resources that were shared. Um, I am thrilled to begin working with you, Dr. Moore, and I welcome you to Richland School District, too. Thank you, Mrs. Porter. Uh, Mrs. Nash? All right. Well, it is good to see all of you. Thank you guys all for coming out. As always, to everybody online, thank you for watching. It has been an incredible two weeks? I don't know. All the days ran into one another. But you guys missed some great moments that we had here. There was a dance party. We have a DJ. Uh, DJ Tony Tone played some music for us as we got prepped every day. And thank you to the staff for being with, here with us this week, too. Tires, tirelessly, you guys were with us every morning bright and early and every night during these summer months. And so also to everybody in the district, thank you guys for just uh, being part of the stakeholder meetings and coming out, giving your feedback, doing the surveys. All of that helped us make our decision. And thank you, Dr. Moore, for being here. We really appreciate it. And I am excited to be working with you as well. Um, this has just been a really, really good process. And uh, to just everybody watching, thank you, news people, for coming as well. And we hope you get this feel-good story story that's happening right here. Some of you got to see the dancing that we did last week. So you, if you come early, you get to see the good stuff. But I um, want to thank all of our uh, people who did our inspirational moment. You guys in media, you young media personalities already, thank you guys for showing up and coming out. We appreciate it. Keep doing the work that you're doing. And I'm trying to think if I forgot anybody. Oh, yes. And this is to call to everybody. I know school is going to be coming back soon, and I'm pretty sure that our, um, our, our team would appreciate me saying, if you have any interest in being a security sub, right? 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 If you have interest in being a security sub, yes. Or a sub. Ms. Porter said, or sub, please get in touch with us. Let us know. We're going to need those people. You heard us talking about the policy for metal detectors. So join us. Be a part of it. There's a lot of great things still happening around Richland, too, this summer. So get involved and, uh, you know, just be a part. So thank you guys so much for a great night and for coming out. Thank you, Ms. Nash. Uh, Dr. Scott. Well, thank you so much. My colleagues said many of the things that I want to say, but I'm going to read from my list to make sure I don't forget anything. First, I want to say thank you to Serve and Connect. Last week, we had an opportunity to sign an MOU for the Richland Northeast High School community. So I am so excited to have a location there where parents and families can go and just talk about safety for the community and how that we can better serve the community in that area. Also, I want to say 
to um, Nancy Gregory and Dr. Franklin and the entire administrative team. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your hard work, your dedication, your long hours, your support, your advice, advice, everything. We could not have made it without you guys. You know the song, never would have made it. That's where we are. But we're going to make it because we have Dr. Moore here. So I want to say that also, I just want to say thank you to those brilliant students who came earlier from Richland Northeast High School of Media. I do look forward to connecting with you guys. You do some great things. So I'm very excited to connect with you guys as well. And then I want to say thank you to one of our former graduates, a 2003 Spring Valley High School graduate. She um, was, I forgot her name, so I have to pull it up. But actually, she graduated from Spring Valley High School, and she is a successful Hollywood screenwriter and producer. And she just got this movie out that's called The Black, uh, Blackening. What's her name? Tracy Oliver. See why we have such a great team? Tracy Oliver, congratulations. We are so proud of you. You are a Richland District Two graduate, and we're so happy about the great things that you are doing. And then I want to say congratulations to Mr. Trapp, who will be the new chair, Mrs. Nash, the vice chair, and Mrs. Washington. Let me just say this. We have a great team here. And I think I've said that on multiple occasions to my colleague. I've served on this board for 10 years. And I truly believe we are going to come together, and this is going to be one of the best boards I've ever served on. So I am so excited and looking forward to that. And then finally, but certainly not least, want to say, Dr. Moore, you are truly going to be a bright light in Richland School District 2. And I look forward to working with you, alongside you, learning from you. And I am a supporter of you. So I just want you to know that Richland School District 2, the community, the teachers, the faculty and staff, we are in great hands. So thank you for accepting this um, offer to be a part of Richland School District 2. Mr. Moore, you are also a part of the family. So we want to say thank you as well. And if there's anything that I can do, because I can only speak for myself, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I am so excited to be a part of this. And you guys have a great night. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Uh, Mrs. McFadden. Thank you, new chairman, <laughs> Mr. Shrek. Um, I want to say thank you so much to all the stakeholders that um, took time out of their days last week to come and visit with um, our candidates for superintendent. Um, we listened to your feedback, the teachers, classified workers, um, board members, of course, business leaders, administrative team, and we took into consideration the things that you guys said, and we appreciate everything, um, the feedback, the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, so we want to say congratulations to Dr. Kim Moore for coming up here. She's been flying for a lot, and and hopefully she can get some rest and get moved up here and get her feet on the ground really well. I also want to say congratulations to my board colleagues for their new positions. I didn't know I was going to get nominated, but thank you, Dr. Scott. I appreciate that. Um, so I want to say to everyone out here, um, thank you all so much for all that you are doing to help our community get better and to move forward where we need to be, where we should have been and never lost. But we got off track, and we're hoping that we can go get back on track and move full steam ahead. So thank you to everyone in this room, those who are watching the media. Hey, guys. Um, um, but thank you all so much for all that you do. Y'all have a blessed and awesome evening. Thank you, Mrs. McFadden. Uh, Mrs. Gregory. Thank you, Mr. Trapp. Congratulations to our new board officers. And I want to thank the board for the opportunity to serve as the interim superintendent of the district. It's really been an honor and a privilege to do this and to serve in this capacity. And I can't thank you enough. I look forward to working with Dr. Moore and know that you have my full support and want to ensure that you have a smooth transition into Richland too. So welcome to the Richland too family. We're so happy to have you. And I'm going to um, also thank the leadership team, the district leadership team for what a great job they've done. It's It has taken a village. And also I want to take a um, um, special moment to thank Mr. Arthur Newton, who is our executive director for elementary instruction 
instruction. Ms. Penny Atkinson, um, who is over secondary instruction, who they did not skip a beat when I took this position on January 17th and have carried the torch in academics and how much I, we all appreciate they're doing that. And I'm going to take a point of privilege as interim superintendent as a mother. I spoke to um, Mr. Rosen and I told him all three of my children went by choice to Richland Northeast, but my oldest daughter was part of the journalism program, and many of you know this. She was, um, it wasn't called Capflex then, but um, at Richland Northeast, she was in the media program, as I mentioned, and she is now a producer for Good Morning America, and she has won two Emmys, a DuPont, and a Peabody. And again, it started at Richland Northeast, so I wanted to take a point of privilege as a parent, a Richland II mother, and um, say thank you for that. Thank you, Mrs. Gregory. Uh, a moment ago, I felt like I'd put a backpack on with about 50 pounds of rocks in it. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I'd, I'd like, I would like to just express gratitude and thankfulness to several people in the room. First of all, uh, our outgoing board officers. Uh, uh, the reason I know this isn't going to be an easy job is because I've seen the job y'all have had to do, and I, and I know it wasn't easy. And I, I want to thank uh, Ms. Agostini, Dr. Scott, and uh, Mrs. Nash for the work they did. Uh, we, we couldn't have done the things we had without Charles' leadership, and I, I appreciate it. Uh, I would like to especially thank uh, Dr. Moore for joining our team, and I look forward to working with you. And, and I, I can tell you the community is going to love you, and they will, they will support you, and, and it will be overwhelming, I think, the, the, the way people are going to, uh, the excitement you're going you're to see from the community. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on the board and to serve, and I really want to point out that that's what we're here for. We're here to serve. Uh, we're here to help the students in this district have the things they need so that they can become the best people they can. And I look forward to working with the community and, and our board and making that happen. And uh, I wish everybody a, a good evening. And can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Before That's I you, acknowledge Joe. you, I, I realized a moment ago I have to pay attention now. This is a little, this is going to be tricky. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Miss 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 Nash. I hope. I move to adjourn the uh, this regularly scheduled Tuesday, June twenty seventh, twenty twenty three board meeting. Do we have a second? Oh, thank you. Y'all have got a year of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, there's a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, it's been made by Mrs. Nash and seconded by uh, Dr. Scott. Do we have any discussion? Uh, board members vote. Are we going to hand vote? Is that six yes? Zero no? The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>